Hello, thanks for joining this presentation of SIMINDI, Symbolic Identification of Nonlinear Dynamics. I'm here with Andrei. Hello, nice to be a guest, Matteo. Thanks. And uh, yeah, today we're presenting this work that we've submitted um, a few days back uh, to the Journal of Open Source Software. This is a draft of the paper associated to our public GitHub repository. And a few words about where this work came from. Um, basically looking into data-driven dynamical systems, uh, we've noticed at least two major uh, points of view. Uh, one which is the sparsity promoting the interpretable but a bit less general approach of Cindy, sparse identification of nonlinear dynamics. And then all the field of uh, less interpretable but, but much more powerful in the presence of big data uh, approach like um, uh, a PISER uh, by Mills Kramer or um, the work in the scientific machine learning in Julia um, using uh, narrow differential equations. Um, there, there is always this tension between uh, interpretability and, uh, and uh, generalizability, I would say. And uh, here we try to find um, um, a trade-off in which uh, because, uh, and, and here is the power of Cindy, because the relation between uh, uh, first order derivative and the state is linear, um, we can set up a, a linear algorithm, linear optimization, to identify complex uh, relations, even in, uh, in the space of uh, functions defining uh, ordinary differential equations. Um, the limit, however, is that uh, in Cindy, we have to predefine the library function, define the, the library of functions whose linear combination is going to lead to um, to our dynamics. Um, so if, uh, in general, one has a, a complex uh, addition, additive terms uh, making building up to the actual dynamics, uh, then it's difficult to use CND. One could think about having a, a really big library, but then, okay, computational cost goes up. Uh, and also, uh, I'm not convinced that um, the, the really nice uh, sparsity promoting uh, optimization algorithms like the sequential threshold of the square could work as uh, uh, efficiently, uh, as good as they do when you have a, a, a relatively big number of uh, library functions, but not so big. Um, so yeah, this is about the Cindy part, uh, which is nonetheless really powerful. I, I encourage you to take a look at the, at the work uh, of, the, of the group in Seattle at the University of Washington. And um, yeah, this is it about Cindy. If Andre, you want to add some words about um, uh, genetic programming? Yep. So generally, I think the theoretical part was covered already by you. So I would just add some pragmatic uh, programming issues. We were looking for basically two packages in Python. Uh, first would be the symbolic regression. For this, we found a really nice, uh, at the first glance, package deep, which is mainly used in biological uh, modeling, in the genetic programming, and so on. It allows you to identify the symbolic equation from the data-driven observations. And uh, for non -linear, uh, linearly uh, reconstructed dynamical uh, systems, we, as Matteo mentioned, used Cindy, symbolic identification of the uh, dynamical... Non-linear dynamics. Non-linear dynamics, sorry. And uh, overall, there was an issue to combine these two uh, packages because they're not intended to work together. So we spent some time um, creating a compliant uh, class, which would uh, be fitting the scikit-learn recommendations, so which basically would allow the user to go to our repository, clone it, instantiate the class, call fit on the data, call predict, to actually have the reconstructed test set uh, data to assess the quality of the model, which is uh, actually not something which is implemented in PySynthy, so we had to adjust the code to this paradigm so that it's more scikit-learn compatible. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, if you can uh, say a bit more about the differences between Cmindy uh, and Cindy, like the, the two things I'd like to mention most is the, the sparsity promoting in the higher level and uh, the training test set that you introduced. Mm -hmm. 
Well, basically, we could run uh, the code which compares the reconstruction of uh, custom non-linearly perturbed oscillator to see the difference between CMD and CMD on a particular example. I guess this would be more illustri illustrative. Yeah. So let me open, do all the steps. We're now in the CMD repository I've just cloned from GitHub. And now we can proceed in the creation of a virtual environment in which we're going to install all the packages that we need um, mm -hmm. to, ru to run CMD. Uh, so from here, uh, let me activate, sorry, I cannot speak and code at the same time. Um, activate the virtual environment and then we can proceed in the installation of all the requirements that are living mm -hmm. inside the, the repository. And here I could mention one limitation of this yeah. package, which is purely computational. The choice of package for symbolic regression was not the best. Deep doesn't support Python 3.10. It had lots of problems with dependencies. So in essence, the main improvement here I see is to use some other genetic programming library, not deep. It's yeah. a good package, but it's outdated. And also parallelization there doesn't work in our setup. Right. Because here we're using a scoop um, instead of the multiprocessing library, I think. Yeah. Right. And ah, I think we never discussed actually is that I've been using, I've started using uh, Python project templates and they're moving away from uh, pip and going into poetry. And so hmm. maybe that could be an interesting upgrade in the maintainability of, uh, of the package. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh other than that, I think it's quite uh, accessible and it's quite standard uh, to both like installation process and to uh, yeah. user uh, guide into how to use this custom plus. So yeah, I'm now installing uh, Simendi in my, mm -hmm. local machine, in my local virtual environment after having installed all the requirements. And okay, version 0 0.1 is installed. And uh, yeah, I guess I can proceed in running some. Yep. So the main limitation of Cindy could be illustrated on a particular example of differential equation, which has a term sine of x squared, a simple one. And as we can see from the last figure from our markdown in the repository, uh, the one after this, oh, yeah. uh, we see that Cindy doesn't get close to original data. It just reconstructs the flat line. But Simindi, on the other hand, reconstructs the data exactly according to the equation which generated it. Yeah. So on this simple example, we can see that Simindi uh, fails to reconstruct some even pretty simple uh, nonlinear perturb oscillators, while Simindi, in reasonable time, does the job. And uh, this is showing you Actually, on the last picture where uh, we saw Cindy and Simindi and the original data, we only show the x and x dot yep. of the test set. So, of course, as Cindy does it, uh, we could have fitted the model on the train set and then reconstructed the train set, but thought that it's more reasonable to stick the machine learning approach of train test set split. And we didn't expose the test data to the model. So this could be considered more stable quality check. Right. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, already, I mean, already the field of uh, uh, data-driven dynamical systems in general uh, is focused a lot. I mean, physics informed the neural networks and this uh, overlap between dynamical system theory and machine learning is focused on uh, not only interpretability, but also uh, extrapolation performance, generalizability. Um, but as you said, I think uh, this, this combination you introduced uh, in uh, training test data is, is interesting. By the way, I was running the algorithm in the, in the background for the MySpring. And um, I guess, yeah, we have five uh, library functions, uh, five functions defining the library of Cindy. And uh, these are uh, generated for each individual. Um, and I should acknowledge uh, Francesco from uh, from my old uni, which introduced this idea of using genetic algorithms 
uh, in which an individual is actually a list of uh, trees in which you are able to then define mutations acting on mutations and uh, and uh, mating acting on sub-individuals instead of individuals and have an individual which is defined as a list of individuals and so in this way the list of individuals the individual which is a list of sub-individuals is going to define the library uh, going into Cindy at the lower level um, but yeah uh, the, the other the, the cool one I guess is probably even though it's already in the readme the Lorentz system and uh, you, you wanted to say something about uh, chaotic uh, systems, uh, like uh, applicability-wise, uh, um, the research you did. Yeah, definitely. So I see a lot of applications in the field of data-driven dynamical systems for this method. And in particular, this could be used in some fluid dynamics where it's important to have a fast algorithm which you would train and uh, predict, so to say, the data much faster than DNN, but still be uh, good enough to reconstruct the data better than just linear methods. And other than that, it could have applications in the nature, uh, natural uh, weather forecasting, uh, because there it's important to predict the data fast and to train maybe from some restricted set of days or restricted time series. Uh, and as we already mentioned, there are some limitations, but mainly uh, these are uh, implementation limitations based on, basically based on deep, that's the main limitation of this package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I think it's what is not underlined uh, in this part, but uh, it's at least uh, easily integratable, integrable, sorry, uh, is the fact that we can define a flag uh, that's gonna uh, give as an input also time uh, and then we have this augmented state in which time is part of it and we can mm -hmm. uh, uh, reduce as, as we usually do in reducing a second order differential equation into a, a first order one uh, uh, add, uh, increasing the dimensionality we can use we can do the same constraining the last uh, component to be time so that the derivative is one and we can include the the, the observation time to have a regression that then it's performed also on, on time and so it can in principle build uh, combinatorial functions of which the the terminal nodes so the input is also time uh, and in this way we can, we can restrict uh, generic um, auto non-autonomous dynamical systems uh, i wanted also to mention that um, and this is somewhat related uh, I, I see a lot of applicability of these methods i mean they're already this is already done um, but this is um, applicable there as well in the field of uh, reduce order modeling, so dynamical system uh, built from data in the context of uh, high dimensional data sets. Um, fluid dynamics is an example, but it's not the only one. Um, it's actually interesting also to, to see how uh, via the Feynman-Kac theorem one can also think about using such a method to reconstruct high dimensional partial differential equations, which is something like fluid dynamics. Um, and using data-driven methods reconstruct a stochastic process which is associated to to such differential equation so a lot of applicability yes great and the last thing to mention but uh, not the least is that actually Simindi allows you to define arbitrary primitive sets so you can have uh, in principle uh, primitive sets of arbitrary size which could be useful for some really complex systems and here for all the reconstructions which you have seen we only used primitive sets uh, with elements of two so that uh, we can have one elementary function like multiplication or addition between two elements but in principle we could introduce some uh, arbitrary number of these elements in the primitive set and other than that, we also have sparsity promotion as the inverse of number of non-zero nodes in an individual, which actually allows us to control for the complexity of the system. Yeah, yeah. Right, yes, we, we needed to have both uh, sparsity promoting algorithms in the space of linear coefficients uh, associated to the CIN department, let's say, of the algorithm, but also have a sparsity promoting section 
to reduce the complexity of the nodes. And uh, and again, at this point, one can do a trade-off between uh, interpretability, so sparsity and um, accuracy, and and define the, the, the best suited model that's that's fitting uh, his situation, his or situation. Um, we didn't mention also, uh, or I think we did uh, kind of indirectly, um, the, the potential of these techniques for um, for uh, nonlinear control. So when you are in a situation in which you are collecting data, uh, I'm thinking about guidance navigation and controlling space, and uh, uh, you have to feed data to your system uh, in fair the dynamical system in which you're uh, moving, evolving, and then take decisions based on that. The fact that this is uh, uh, more general, more general than CND, but less computational, expensive than uh, deep neural networks approach, neural networks in general, uh, makes it a, a promising avenue to to perform these tasks. Yeah, so feel free to check it out in the repo and uh, to make some pull requests to improve the performance and solve some issues. And we also plan to test it against other existing algorithms, which is, for example, the first one, symbolic regression PISR. Yeah, indeed. Thanks a lot, Andrea. Yeah. So thank you. It was a very interesting conversation and hope to work with you soon and have a good time.